Yeah. Like to call us meeting the order? Clerk to call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Here. Depenia? Here. Graziano? Here. Notori? Here. Robel? Here. Strimolo Burke? I don't have a lot of people here. Mayor Manler, can you just share? Here. Sunshine notice? Pursuant to the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was published in the December 18th issue of the Star Ledger and December 20th issue of the Bubble Times. A copy of this notice has been posted on the Bubble Town Hall Bulletin Board and a copy is on file in the Municipal Clerk's Office. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this point, I'm going to ask for a motion to go into executive session to discuss litigation and various agreements. So moved. We have a motion made. Second it. Uh, clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Defania? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Robel? Yes. Tim Lober? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. At this point, unfortunately, we are going to go into executive session. We do have to clear the courtroom. No action will be taken on the executive. We will be invited. Just call the meeting back to order. We're going to move forward with our combined conference regular meeting. The first item up for discussion is. Uh, we're going to receive Dr. Tomko, the superintendent of Belleville Schools, to discuss the free pre-K program. So I'll just advise, I see a lot of new faces here today. This is actually a caucus portion of our meeting, whereby the council discusses various initiatives, uh, thoughts, ideas, concepts. Unfortunately, it's not open for public commenting, but you will have your portion of public commenting later on in the meeting. At this point, it's just a conversation amongst the council and any one of our invited guests. So you're basically just spectators listening to that. If you have comments that you want to make, you can still make them during this meeting. It's just going to be later on. So with further ado, Mr. Tomko. Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. Where would you like to? Uh, you can shut the gate and stand right, stand right, right at the gate. It's going to be an echo. It's going to sound weird. Don't get it's going to sound very weird. weird. So we are, we have Dr. Tomko here. As most of the council knows and most of the public knows, we've been exploring the concept of pre-K in Belleville. We've been speaking uh, uh, extensively with our state delegation. Uh, led by Senator Ruiz, who has some funding via a grant that can put 90 children into free all day pre-K. This is not the first opportunity we've had at this. Uh, we have only lost this opportunity in previous years simply because of space. We truly do not have space. And uh, the state will pay the grant, which will pay and cover all the costs, all the ongoing operating costs. So at this point, really what you're going to hear from Dr. Tomko, I've met with him. Uh, I know Councilman uh, DePena has, and if some other council may have talked to him at times. Uh, I know even our manager, Mr. Tucci, has. we've been out touring places. So we've been touring various buildings, uh, facilities throughout the township. The crux of it is this. We have funding for six 750 square foot classrooms, that's <coughs> state guidelines. So you're talking uh, 4,500 square feet of classroom space with some additional space for faculty or staff or whatever. So we're looking for anywhere on the vicinity of 6,000, 7,500 square feet. Again, the state pays for the program. We would obviously have to retrofit whatever we find. So we're looking right now for a short-term solution, something that could be as quick as September or as late as, as January, and then maybe something more permanent. So without, that's just a summary for those of you who care to know the summary. And I'll just turn the floor over to Doc. I'm just going to ask you, Doc, speak loudly sure. because we are, we are videoing live. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as the Mayor just uh, indicated, we've been working on this, and, and many of the, uh, the council members know for the past few years, and, and uh, that we've been working on this for several years now. When the, the expansion grant first came out, unfortunately, we're not eligible for that for the first uh, two cycles due to the first question is do you have space? Uh, we already run six pre preschool programs or integrated preschool programs. They're by lottery, uh, meaning that we have, uh, we service the special needs population of our students, four, uh, four year olds and uh, three and four year olds. Uh, however, to integrate that, we have to have, for lack of a better term, regular ed students uh, also in there. So we pr provide a lottery at a tuition, a, a nominal uh, tuition base right now. So we do have preschool in, in district. However, this expansion grant uh, put out a, um, a large sum of money to help districts expand their preschool programs uh, with something called Pre-K Our Way, 
where you are to partner possibly with independent providers in town, which I believe we have almost 20 providers in town here. Uh, so we've been working on that for a few years. And one of our biggest concerns is the parameters that you just explained, Mayor. Um, the space, the bathrooms, each classroom is supposed to have a bathroom. So we've been working on this for several years now, trying to find space. And for all of the, for lack of a better term, those, those properties that are available in Belleville, they're, they're not um, really something that we can work with at this point. Um, we are looking for a permanent fix. However, we've lost, my estimate would be close to a million dollars in funding a year um, for this program, which is, a, which is a big amount of money. Um, it would put more teachers in our classrooms, uh, it would put more aids, leasing, things, uh, any type of uh, equipment, all those things are available at this grant money. Um, again, we're, we're pretty close with temporary fixes now. I don't know if you want to discuss some of those or not. Uh, we look at some permanent things, too, to talk about um, in consideration of the Walgreens property. Um, again, maybe not optimal, but can be renovated. Let me just ask you a question. Uh, if we found a suitable place, 6,700 square night, I'm asking this question because tomorrow I'm going to get a million emails from people yes. that have property and have space. I'm sure you are. <laughs> you, you alluded to the parameters before. Right. Predominantly first floor, 750 square yes. feet per classroom, bathroom in each classroom. Correct. They don't want anything above the second floor. That's no good. Okay. It can't be down at least four stairs or more. Correct. There's a lot of parameters. Yes, ADA compliance right. issues. Um, the bathroom, the, as long as the sewer, the sewer lines or you know something that we can tap put a bathroom into, tap into tap is fine. So if um, we find a suitable location, meaning the township yes. uh, with your cooperation, you do have some money budgeted that you Correct. would be able to retrofit. Correct. For um, yes, there's money set aside um, for for leasing for whatever we can. I mean there. The idea, and again, I don't know how much we want to talk about tonight, but I guess you put me on the spot. So, um, here. I'll make you the better. Right. The idea is to partner with the town. This is this is uh, it's always been a township partnership with us in this, sure. in, this uh, in the pre-K expansion. Um, the whole idea is to partner with the town to come up with some type of location. Um, I think even the senator was taken aback that we couldn't find any place, right. but we've all tried very hard, and, and some optimal spaces are on third floors, which is not congruent to the needs of preschool year. Plus, uh, for the benefit of everybody listening to the conversation, parameters, one of the most important ones is an outdoor playground. Correct. Outdoor so playground. Not everybody's got an outdoor playground, playground on the right. property. Or the ability to have an outdoor right. playground. Right. Uh, so so we're, we're really trying hard to get this in. Um, again, we had some other ideas. I don't know if you want to approach those now. Yeah, or, I'll just touch on them real quick. We, we do have a pretty good lead. Uh, we've toured a couple times already. Uh, the manager's been with us, the councilman's been with us. Uh, we've toured a couple different locations, so we have a pretty good lead on something that uh, the doc and I are going to go out and see probably toward the end of this week. 6,000 square feet, warehouse space, first floor, a lot of parking, space for an outdoor playground. And that we're thinking, and it would be a decision that he would make obviously with the school, with the school board, school district, but we're thinking something temporary, maybe a year or two or three. And then, as the doc says, we would love to partner with the school district in some capacity. So, with that being said, we've had conversations here, uh, sometimes formally, sometimes just casually, that the high school complex, uh, and again, it's very unique to Belleville that the stadium and the baseball field and the football field is actually the municipal complex, so it's really municipal land, and then you have the high school complex. There have been long plans, uh, I have them upstairs in my office, for some kind of a rec center at the high school, a, a standalone building. And we've been brushing off those plans. And if we can partner with the school district that has some money budgeted already, that may work. Because if we build a, a 100 by 100 square foot building, which would give us 10,000 square feet, the thought is that the school district can utilize the first floor for pre-K. And as we mentioned, it's about 4,500 square feet. Yeah. The school district could probably also move their board offices there since it's right in the same complex, freeing up space in the high school. And now they've occupied the entire first floor, and we can then maybe utilize the second floor in two parts, either a part multi-purpose room that we desperately need here in Belleville, and what I like, the concept of bringing our recreation offices yeah. at the municipal complex since there are a plethora of problems with the current rec house, which is why we can't have our own 
uh, daycare there or our own summer care there. Uh, there's, I don't want to get into them, but there's a lot of problems with that building. It's very dated. It's, it's, it's not compliant uh, to, a, to a standard that needs to be. So that can potentially solve, solve some problems, and it gets an asset for us of a rec center and a brand new building, whereby the school district can be our partner and fund, you know, equal parts of that. I think that would be something viable for us. So to explore. Right. The, I, I can speak for the board. I think that we're not aware of that project. No. I, I'm not until you mentioned it. So it's something we're very interested in. Um, I've always said this is my first day here that we really need to work together to, to do the best for our students, citizens. So but there's uh, a lot of space up at that municipal There is complex. absolutely a lot of space, and, we, and I know I know you and I have talked about the tennis courts because we didn't know if those are ours or yours or the Green Acres, and they're apparently ours and have to be repaired. So something we've looked at. Let them look for any money here. Have at it. Wait, that would also be a good part time to move them in and allow more park. I was explaining to the doc today yeah. that we used to have another set of tennis courts yeah. in right field there. <coughs> Actually, I said, Councilman, I said that exact thing. If they get moved inside the municipal complex, that would free up parking. That would service a, a new building that would be there. And that yeah. left field to center field out. And, and, I, and I think, again, with, with all due respect, it sounds like a, I, I would love to see that plan come to fruition, and, and I'm sure it will. I, I just think that's several years sure. still out. At least so years out. This is, a, this is a program with the board. With the pre-K pre expansion is something the board really wants to get into. And, mm -hmm. and right now we are... I'm running out of time. Sure. Um, short term goals are short -term goals goals kind of something of for a year or two or three. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're going out this, this week to, to, look, to look for something for that. Right. Uh, and again, really, at, at that short term, that short term really has nothing to do with us. Right. Uh, that would be a decision that the doc makes with the board. Absolutely. It's just, we're just going out. And we're on board, though, for the second part. Yes. Yeah. Right. No, the, the second part is definitely a plan that I think mm -hmm. the, board, the board's committees and, and your committees or whomever how that would work, we would definitely love to have a joint meeting and, and talk about that. Um, obviously, it's your, your property, your, your specs and whatnot. We'd love to um, talk about that further and how we can expand that into our own, you know, somehow be partnered with you on that. Um, again, I, I think, you know, um, this, this council is more, again, with all due respect to any former council or mayor or whatever it is, this council is more um, responsive to pre-K pre expansion. Um, just because I think that uh, in the past it wasn't as heightened on an alert that we've missed two rounds now. No one in Essex County got it last year at all. Um, not, um, not, not one who hasn't had it yet. Oh, so, um, so that's a that's a concern for. Uh, I'm sorry. And what, what we're talking about is 90 students, possibly. Uh, uh, could be up to 90 students. I don't. I don't want to. Well, if we get the amount of right, and I'm looking for multiple multiple spaces. I mean, there there could be three different spaces. That, you know, I mean, we're just. I just want to open up. <coughs> I love to have one complex. Mm -hmm. Make it easier. You know, food service, nurse. There's 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 a whole other yeah. gamut of things that have to go into the planning for this. Um, we can't do any of that without a location. Right. How would they be selected? Just it'd still be through a lottery. Lottery. So we actually be income based on income? Uh, no, this would not be based on income. Um, this would just be lottery. Okay. So whatever the parameters are, I shouldn't I shouldn't speak out of turn and not knowing all of them, but right. I'm pretty sure this would have to be lottery. Why not not lottery. necessarily. Income Why not? Okay. Yeah. So, um, so so given the time of, <coughs> if we were to come up with something, shovels can be in the ground and doing what we doing needs to be done in preparation of September. I'm I'm ready to go as soon as I find a spot. Yeah, I mean we're on high alert. We have money budgeted for this. Um, we were I was under the impression that some sites would be ready by September. Um, but it looks like there are some issues with ADA compliance. Yeah. So those are on the back burner right now. So we're looking for any space available now. And again, with all the uh, everybody talking about all the, the space here, it's not shovel our broom ready we're right. on call. <laughs> I'm very optimistic of what tour uh, this week. So I hope, I hope so. so. Is there any other council person? We're good for it. We're on board here. It's good program. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thoughts, comments? No? Great. Um, I don't see I don't have a copy of it for the second item. I was recently at the mayor's conference. And I was with, uh, I believe it was uh, the consultants from Mazer, actually. Yes. Are you, can you 
talk to this time at all or no? I, I, I read the ordinance. You want to basically? Yeah, just, just come right here and let, let me just tell everybody what we're doing. So I, I was recently at, at a mayor's conference and I was speaking with uh, Mazer, people from Mazer, and I was still not happy at the fact that when we walked on, on uh, Belmore, it was a brand new street that was beautifully paved. And all of a sudden, I saw not one, not two, but three different dig-ups that were just horribly dug, gravel, not not uh, patched back in correctly. It was it was horrendous. It really was horrendous. And I was discussing that, and I know for a fact Councilman Cazarelli has been mentioned. I think it was Carney. Yeah, yeah we've, been, we've been Carney working on it. We've been, working on we've been piecing together other towns so to see the best of all. So Mazer has an ordinance from, for example, that would force the utilities, if they dig up the street, after we give them notice of which streets we're going to be paving, right. if they come in a month later and dig it up, they got to pave the whole, well, so not the, the whole curve length, called, yeah. but the whole block. Curve, yeah, curve the curve. Curve yeah. the curve, the whole block. So, Tom, if you well, that, just... That was basically, I think there was a five-year moratorium on... Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. five-year moratorium that they, depending on how much they tear up, they pave curve to curve. If it's just a small hole, they have to go 50 feet either side of it, curve to curve, if I remember correctly. Right. There were three parameters in that ordinance. Yeah, so so is this just more for more utilities? Three feet. <coughs> Anyone who digs up the street, it's more than three feet. Except on that out. Except on that out. Except on that out. Except three feet. Oh, okay. Oh, you have a copy? Yeah, yeah, I have a copy. Okay. More than three feet. Oh, it's good to do because in this time, you can get rid of it. You can get rid What, in your opinion, does it work? I mean, do they actually come in and... Yeah, but you have to force them to do road opening permits. And uh, right. that's the utility companies come in and they, just they, have, a, they have an opening, an open, like an almost like an open road opening permit. So right. you have to make them do each one, one for each dig so you keep track of it. Who does that? Like who well, in this township? The building company? No, the no, engineering. No, what about, too, like when they come in, they're supposed to be using our protection, our police force. Yeah. And I've seen as of late, state police and other things. So is there a way to, to include that in the ordinance to make sure we use our people? Because that'll kind of force them to be enforced. Mm -hmm. Don't know. I've seen the right name. I think it's ordinance. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the, uh, but how, how does that handle with our DPWs and our water guys that go out and Dig it up. I mean, it's, it's, it's it does nothing to do with that. We have to give them money to outside utilities. It's only outside utilities. So this would be cable, fiber, PSE&G. Somebody other than us water. PSE&G gas, right. But what is our, what do we do? Like, we, I'm going back to Belmar for a second. But we hand that contract. We knew we were going to do that street. We, we bid it out. We received bids. We awarded the contract. What internally... In, in this town, what do we then do? Do we send our water department out there to test hydrants, to test the boxes, or? You know what? That is something we got to do is start initiating, make sure everything is good on that. We, right. We don't no point. the sewers before. Well, one of those dig ups was, was a fire hydrant. And yes, it was the valve. There was a valve. So, I mean, is there a way, I guess my question is, is there a way to check for that? Yeah, make them exercise all the valves, make sure the hydrants are working. And, so we can do that. Yeah. Check the water on and off sometimes. Don't you send a list of public service yeah. before we pay? They have a I website called, uh, I forget what it's called. But before you, every year, I just sent one for this year. Mm -hmm. right. I'm not worried about them, I'm also worried about us. Because yeah. yeah. we, we seem to be going and digging up. Maybe we could, a document and process has to be put in place to encompass every... Like a checklist. Yeah, checklist, just to go ahead and after, go to vote before, during, and after. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, the, the township's been here a hundred years. We, 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 can't, we, can't, we haven't done that right, yet. We can't, right. if, if it's not there, we go back. Huh? can't go back and change yesterday. Right. Implement yeah, it. We'll, 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 we'll put I'll, I'll put something together for them to at least check the streets that we know we're doing. A lot, a lot, you know, a lot of emergencies you still can't avoid. Right, but you can still follow the process. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Any questions? I think that we can... Maybe rework some of that ordinance to put about the police. Yeah, you can just yeah. give that rework that for Belmont's purposes mm -hmm. and give that to the clerk. We'll, we'll definitely get it on. I'll do it. I'll, get, I'll give it to Steve to review before we give it to the clerk to do it. But then it's, it's 
you know, I hate to say it, but then it comes down to like everything else. It's, it's enforcement on our side, so we have to police it. There's no point in doing this if we don't necessarily police it. So we need to process it. Please, please, please it. To communicate, like you said, right. some sort of process. Okay. So can you do that, Tom? Yep. Thank you. So that was number two, ordinance repaving roads, for roads with no bond permit. Uh, the next item is, we, this is probably now the fourth work session we've discussed this. Um, I've spent a lot of time talking to our senior clubs uh, Tuesday and Friday. <coughs> they constantly complain that uh, they don't know what's going on in the township. And I get that and I understand that. They're not necessarily on the internet, so they don't see our, our website. And if they're not on the internet, they don't have social media, so they don't see that. They used to rely heavily on the local newspapers, the weeklies. We don't really have them anymore. Uh, the closest thing that probably comes is probably the Observer, and that covers eight, nine different towns. And um, and it's funny, because when, when I talk to them and they ask me about something, I say to them all the time, how did you hear about this? And somebody at the club told me. So we have to do a better job of trying to communicate to them. And the first item that I thought about would be something that was almost cost neutral, I thought, is we're all used to this recycling calendar here. And uh, this, so we have a budget for this, and we print it up every year, and it's got a 12-month calendar in it. And I think the last two or three years, we missed, we got it out in like August when it started in July. So I know we get a lot of complaints that we don't get out on time. And if you ask me, it it's grossly underutilized we have it's a 32 page document that the majority of it covers really 12 months and I think it can be redesigned this is something that I've had some experience with it can be redesigned and repurposed into a community newsletter so instead of mailing that once a year we can do it twice a year and it could have positive articles about some of the initiatives and programs and services that we've been doing as well as have just a six month calendar because when we do this in July, and, or when we mail it out, we have to know all our events through next July, or June 31st, say. So if we do it every six months, the calendar can be a lot more timely. And when I talk about wasted space, if you ever flip through this thing, most people, I get it, only use it for the calendar. But if you flip through this, I mean, this looks like a, a circular that you would get from ShopRite or something like that. I mean, it's, I don't know how useful it is. And I would argue that the content in it is literally just copied and pasted every single year. Uh, it hasn't changed in years. So as I read this, this is our clerk's page. So as I read this, I don't know if our council is, under the, is, is aware of the fact that when you request a block party, the mayor and organizations have to address the municipal council. I found that to be odd. I didn't know that. And then if you go on to read about tag days, which by the way, we don't really even sanction tag days anymore. That's the record the part does that. Again, the mayor and the organization has to address the council. So this stuff hasn't been looked at in a long time. It's been copy and paste. I think we just do a better job. And it's, it, it does cost, uh, I think we're a couple thousand dollars more to have an outside company do it twice a year than we are just doing this, hit the print button every year. So Would that be still done through the same grant? Uh, this is no grant. This is already so budgeted. Be, okay. It's already budgeted. I think this, I have it down here. Um, it's between communities, but I don't know. It is, yeah. Uh, it is, recycling, yeah. Recycling. Because recycling. Because that's recycling. why. Okay. Yeah. We have here 18, I think 25, we would get twice a year. So it's a $7,000 increase, and we get positive news stories. I think they even mentioned a column for award or something like that. But anyway, that's yeah. uh, you could potentially get advertisement for offset. Yeah. Yeah. Not big on advertisement, but uh, I think the chief is able to do it. But anyway, that's probably the fourth time we've discussed it. Um, that's the recycling calendar. The senior newsletters, again, I'm still open to discuss this, whether we something monthly or bi-monthly, not as elaborate as this, not as full color. Uh, we already saw that there's 4,500 senior households. So even if we just did a trifold, that had some news on it that we sent out to our to 4,500 senior households every month, every month. That would be something that I think they would enjoy. Just a thought, that one we're not really moving on yet. Uh, but that's just a thought. My last item is social media archiving. Uh, 
I didn't realize this was on there. So, so we, we well, I'm, I'm actually, I'm glad that it's on there, Mayor, because um, it, it should have been an agreement that uh, should have been included with this agenda. I just need to double check why it was not, but it'll absolutely be on the next agenda. Yeah, there was uh, two weeks ago, not in New Jersey, but there's another municipality that was hacked and for ransomware, which is a little different topic than this. This is, since the township does do social media now, official channels of Facebook and Twitter, we are obligated to archive and back that up. Um, as so much so the clerk herself, or this self, whatever town you're in, is responsible. So if a resident actually, and this is where most people don't realize it, we have social media accounts, Facebook and Twitter, township ones. If we post something out there and a resident comments, and then somebody else comments underneath that, and then one of them delete their comment, the clerk is still responsible for that record. It's a public record. So without the help of a third party company, uh, you can't archive that. It's, uh, it's, it's, I think it's $100 a month or something like that. The third party company does just that. I think we're, we're billing it out through uh, SHI though, because uh, they don't have a state contract. Um, it's a national company, it's a big company, it's something like that. Uh, all right, so we, tomorrow, are we, we going to get that off in the next? Yes, it will be on the next minute. Okay. Uh, I am done, actually, B, which is Councilman Graziano, was in error. We are going to put that on for the next work session, which is the first meeting in June, which is going to be June 11th. So on June 11th, will be that will be the first item tell on the caucus portion of the meeting. Yes. Uh, and our township attorney has popped on for an hour. Yes. Uh, there were, this was on communications, but it's something that I would have to deal with. Uh, there's a very small piece of property behind 81 Accessing Avenue that is landlocked. For some reason, the township owns it. We own a lot even, of property. It's not even, uh, it's about 15 by 15. It's a very, very small piece of property. But, um, the appraisal is going to cost more than that. Well, the appraisal, yeah, the appraisal may cost more than the, the uh, now I think it will be valued a little bit more than that because there's other property owners that surround, there's four or five, believe it or not, there's four or five property owners that surround it. Um, uh, so I just wanted, you're okay, and, and so I can explore getting an appraisal and, and sell it to uh, one property owner, uh, wrote to the township, uh, but... Uh, requesting it, but it, since, it is, it's uh, since it is an undersigned lot, um, it just has to be offered to all of the abutting properties. Mm -hmm. So I'll get an, I'll have an appraisal done um, uh, with our appraisal company, and then um, uh, good. We'll, we'll do a resolution to list it once we have the appraisal. Mm -hmm. so, I, I've been emailed by several pro property owners that have, we have probably over 100 properties. Uh, we're in the process of databasing them now, plotting onto a map so we can see what the township actually owns visually. But we have people that are interested in buying adjacent property. So what they would just they write a letter to the township, well, or, or or the township can offer it on its own. So the township. Will <coughs> own its own. Now this property, I don't even know how it's, it worked out that it, it, the township owns it. Um, it's a, it's in the backyards of three or four different properties. Um, so. Township can sell any property uh, that it doesn't have use for, uh, depending on whether it's a buildable lot, whether it's not a buildable lot. So uh, just to, just for the benefit of those, if it's a buildable lot, we have to just hold an auction but and the highest price gets. Buildable lot, a buildable lot, uh, it has to be auctioned off. Uh, a lot that's that's undersized and is not buildable has to be offered to the adjacent, adjacent property owners, and then if the adjacent property owners don't want to buy it, it can be auctioned off, but it's not likely that anybody would buy an underside lot that, that, nobody, that the adjacent property owners don't even want. So, if there was more, more than one person that wanted it, it would be a bid up. It would be, yeah, right, exactly. There's a minimum. We do the appraisal because we don't know what it's worth, so the appraiser gives, gets, fixes an amount, and the minimum bid is always that amount. Um, we have an obvious obligation to the residents that. <coughs> we get full value for the property, that's why we get the Got it. And, and just so, so the public knows, the property owner who buys it actually just ends up reimbursing the township for the cost of that appraisal. Oh, uh -huh. so they and, and any cost. So it doesn't cost the township anything ultimately if it's cool. Okay. Like that. Next up, we have approval minutes. 
the bond conference and regular meeting of April 9th. Make a motion. Second. Motion made and second. Clerk, go roll. Councilmember Cazarelli. Yes. Tanya. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Natori. Yes. Robel. Yes. Camilo Burke. Yes. Mayor Melhead. Yes. Board of Manager. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Brief report this evening. Uh, on the agenda, you will see uh, four salary ordinances. Uh, the first two are basically housekeeping, uh, deleting some positions uh, from one bargaining unit and adding them into another and making some modifications, I believe, on uh, two titles. Uh, the next two concerns the PBA and the FMBA and the salary order to the recent approved um, contracts and memorandums uh, of understanding. And I believe the, uh, the PBA contract is completed. Uh, I have finished my review, and then I'll set it up to you for your, for your signature. And the, uh, the FMBA Sure, I expect that for the end of the week. Uh, concerning DPW, uh, we trimmed trees on four streets. We removed uh, the trees that were diseased or and or dead on 10 streets. We patched 24 streets. We've cleaned various uh, township properties. Uh, we've been maintaining our recently approved varsity baseball field. And we serve six water main plates and water services. That's all I have. Questions? Yes. Just, just speak up. I just want to remind everybody to speak up. Please. Yeah, Mr. Tudes. Yes, sir. Question. Why are we moving from, on the, the two first ordinances, why are we deleting from a BME, A employee, and moving to a supervisor's unit? Because prior to me getting here in two, that January of 2016, there was one title where a few of the folks in that title were moved to the LIU bargaining unit, and this is the housekeeping. Part. All this does is move the, the remaining two, I believe, into that same market. Okay, so it's just a move of a title, that's exactly. it. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody else? Um, anything regarding the report of manager? Mm -hmm. No? Report of the mayor. Just want to start with a few follow ups. As you heard the manager speak before, the uh, PBA contract is, is ready. Uh, as soon as I get it, it'll be signed. I just signed tonight the FMBA. That was, I guess, the memorandum of understanding. Right. Okay. So I just signed that contract tonight. Uh, last week we had our police union tour send off. I was on site for that in the handover. Uh, our guys pedaled all the way down from New Jersey to Washington uh, in honor of some of our fallen police officers. Uh, they observed the candlelight vigil and basically headed back. Yeah. They, they pedaled all the way in the rain. It wasn't fun, I'm sure. I've seen some of the videos. Uh, the library had a good Cinco de Mayo event. We had a great community cleanup day. We had a bunch of people out. We spread out throughout the township, various different locations. Cleaning up at that same day, we dropped off about 10 different or 15 different planter boxes. If you've seen the planter boxes with the flowers throughout the township, there's, I believe, 15 or 20 more. 20, 20 more coming. Uh, that came at uh, the help of not only our Boy Scouts and the original one, but our, our high school, too. Uh, so there's 20 more coming. If you have locations or you want one or your business that wants something outside, feel free to contact us. We've already discussed the condition of Belmar Ave. Today we've mentioned the ordinance. So current stuff, we have, uh, you heard already, free pre-K. We're still going down that road. It's something that we definitely want to deliver and work closely with the Board of Education with. We are going to be continuing the conversations internally here with uh, regard to the Great Lawn. So I've been sending some emails about this for our various professionals and what sparked this, what sparked this new interest in the last couple days is twice in the past four days I saw people walking in Franklin Avenue because the trees are so overgrown that they don't feel comfortable walking on the sidewalk. I saw somebody running, wasn't quite sure if they were just running in the street or couldn't fit on the sidewalk. But well, I did see something on Sunday that was potentially very dangerous and scary. A woman walking a dog, the dog was nearly hit. She had to yank the dog by the leash to get him out of Why she was walking her dog in the middle of, uh, in the lane of the street, I don't know. I think they could have probably fit on the sidewalk, but just not comfortable there. It's, it's a public safety issue at this point. Uh, we are exploring uh, some legal options there. I think it's already on the work session for the June meeting to give some direction to our professionals on how we can move forward on potentially acquiring that land 
It is deed restricted to open space. We obviously want to always keep it deed restricted to open space, but it's just currently not being maintained. And if we can acquire it and maintain it, I think it would be a good asset for Belleville, uh, you know, for open space, clearly. Uh, moving forward, uh, next Monday, May 20th at 10.30 in the morning, uh, we'll, we will have our United States Senators here, and potentially our Congressperson in Belleville on Washington Avenue for the post office renaming, uh, to the, to the, or naming it in honor of Mr. Sabella. And that's going to be at 10.30. I don't have a flyer, I haven't received anything yet, but it is next Monday at 10.30 in the morning. Uh, I was recently <coughs> interviewed by Comcast Newsmakers. That interview is now starting to air. In that interview, you will hear that Belleville now has an app. The app is part of the website. So you can go to the Apple Store right now, type in Bevel NJ, it's in beta mode. So if you were to go to your Apple Store with your phone, type Bevel NJ, you'll see the app, you can download it, you can report bugs. It's basically a mobile uh, 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 app version of the website. Uh, there is some different features in there that you might like. Just want to mention that. Uh, we have a DOT public hearing on May 23rd. So that's coming up May 23rd at 6 o'clock right here in this room. DOT is committing to a 10 to $12 million upgrade to Washington Avenue. I will say this, as I say it every time, this is their road, this is their highway, this is their plan. They're merely coming here to present their plan to us. We've had some meetings with them, and we've asked them for some consideration, and they've listened to, we believe, some of our recommendations. But at the end of the day, we need to be there at that meeting on May 23rd, to let them hear us. Okay? We're not the people that you need to field your complaints to. You need to be here on the 23rd so the state hears your issues or your concerns or your complaints. I will tell you, they are exploring what's called road dieting. So right now we have a four-lane highway outside, and they are exploring going down to three travel lanes with a shared lane. So it would be a, a turning lane in the center, kind of like what you see in Florida where it's a shared turning lane in the center. Uh, believe it or not, uh, they say, and I've seen some reports, I've even seen a study from a police chief who was first against it, and now he's the biggest advocate of it, because when you're driving down the street, if you're in the center lane, and somebody's making a left in front of you, you tend to jet over to the next lane, and that's where the accidents happen. So now there's a dedicated turn lane, and the traffic flows much easily, uh, much more easily. Can't say I'm in favor of it, I'm just going to say that you need to be there on, on May 23rd at 6 o'clock, right here to hear that. Uh, lastly, our next meeting. Our next council meeting is in two weeks from today. It's May 28th, 6 o'clock right here. That's our budget introduction meeting. So you'll hear about the budget at that meeting. And uh, lastly, we are going to be hearing some stuff in the next couple days by the end of the week about a Memorial Day ceremony that we always do. That's it for really my mayor's report. Uh, next up, first meeting of the month, which is this caucus meeting. We have any committee reports. Any council person that sits on an ad hoc committee that has anything to say, this is Speak Now, if ever hold your peace. Yeah, we had we had the second IT meeting. We're just waiting for some budget and some additional information. Yeah, we're so we know some questions. Yeah, we're waiting for some budget information and some information, some information back from uh, the internet circuits and stuff. Can we get a chance? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so we can now come back together and put together a final put together a final uh, presentation with the course. That's IT? Yeah. Anybody else? We were, I know that we did the, we're doing the salary order on introduction today. The next meeting, which next work session, which is the first meeting in June, we're going to have a discussion on that. But we were going to do some surveys, if you remember, of various, I don't want to say what titles, but do you remember Yes, the different titles that were surveyed, right. um, they will be ready for the next meeting. Okay. Uh, so we'll get them to you. And then just to follow up from the last mayor's report, we, uh, only because it pertains to the salary order tomorrow, we, we, I saw in the salary order it still has the secretaries being paid per meeting, which is totally fine. Uh, but we were going to, I think, formalize the policy on that. That's it. Just want to force the order. Next up, everybody good up here? Next up, communications. A letter received from the Deputy State Historic Preservation Officer of the New Jersey Historic Preservation Office that comments were received for the following locations. Roadway resurfacing of Rutgers Street from Washington Avenue to Main Street, 
Roadway resurfacing of Union Avenue from Melville Avenue and Mill Street. Roadway resurfacing of Mill Street from Washington Avenue, Washington Avenue East to Main Street. And roadway resurfacing of Mill Street from Union Avenue to Bridge Street. The letter received from Charles L. Smith, Senior Director of Government and Regulatory Affairs of Comcast, stating, Camellia County of Belleville has received a $2,500 scholarship from Comcast for the Leaders Achievers Program. And C, letter, letter received from the Grace Baptist Church with permission to conduct their annual block, block party on Saturday, August 24th, on Greenmont Street between Little and Oakwood Avenue, excuse me, from 1 to 5 p.m. Do we make a motion? Yeah. 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 Are we a motion to accept that? Yeah. Yeah. Motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Pazzarelli? Yes. Pena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Drew Milberg? Yes. Mayor Melvin? Yes. Just real quick in that communication, A, I know you read the streets off Rucker Street. We, I've been getting a ton of complaints about Rucker Street as it relates to the intersection by Main Street. And uh, so just so we all know up here, they're doing Rucker Street from Washington Avenue to Main Street. It does not include that intersection. Uh, the state maintains that it's the county responsibility. It's the county maintains the state responsibility. I've talked to both. They both said that we, the township, need to sue both of them to get some of them to do that. So in the meantime, if the road becomes a public safety hazard. I sent, and, and the manager saw this, I sent some nasty emails last week. And actually, the state did come out and patch it. But we all know the patch only lasts weeks, if it does. So we still have some work to do to get that portion done. But we're trying, and they both are trying to can down the road. But this, don't be mistaken, this does not include that intersection. <coughs> Next up, ordinances. Ordinance number one for introduction and ordinance to amend an ordinance creating permanent positions and adopting reclassification and compensation plans. Um, motion introduced. Second. Motion maintained. Clerk, call the roll. Council member Cazarelli. Yes. Dependent. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Notari. Yes. Robel. Yes. Juvenile Burke. Yes. Mayor Miller. Yes. Ordinance number two for introduction and ordinance to amend an ordinance creating permanent positions. Adopting reclassification and compensation plans. Any motion introduced? Second. Motion made. Thank Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Dependent? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strubelover? Yes. Mayor Memory? Yes. <coughs> ordinance number three for introduction and ordinance creating personnel positions and adopting classification plans. Any motion introduced? Second. Motion made. Thank Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli? Yes. Dependent? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Schumann Burke? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Ordinance number four for introduction and ordinance creating personnel positions and adopting classification and compensation plans. Make a motion introduced. Second. Motion made. Same court call roll. Council Member Cazarelli? Yes. Dependent? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Schumann Burke? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Ordinance number five for introduction of ordinance amending the revised general ordinances in the Township of Belleville, section 8-2.5 regarding no parking of trucks on certain no parking of trucks on certain streets, certain vehicles during certain hours. I'm sorry, I got all confused there. Make a motion to introduce. We're going to introduce anyway. Motion made, second clerk, call roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Dependia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strubelover? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Ordinance number six for introduction and ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances in the sound of the novel, chapter 8-16, handicapped parking spaces. Make a motion to introduce. Second. Um. Motion made, second. Clerk, call roll. Council member Cosarelli? Yes. Dependia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Robel? Yes. Trimble Yes. Mayor Melvin? Yes. We're going to move on now to B, just, just for the benefit of getting a lot of strange looks for people because I see a lot of first timers here. These ordinances for introduction are just that. They're just being introduced. They're not all yet. They're not final. There'll be a second reading in about two meetings from now where the public will have the ability to speak on them. You see a lot of salary changes there for a lot of our different unions. Those are really because of our contract negotiations are final and we're signing the contracts. Now we have to update the salary ordinances to reflect that 2% or whatever that, that, that increment increase was. That's why you're seeing all these salaries change. Next up, we have B, ordinances for public hearing, second and final reading. Ordinance number one for public hearing, an ordinance to exceed municipal budget appropriation and to establish a cap back. Motion over for public. Second. 
Motion made and second. Clerk, call roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Dupenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Robel? Yes. Truman Lilberg? Yes. Mayor <coughs> Melvin? Yes. Mr. Frank Tantone? Thank you for being here, Council. I uh, oppose this every year because, uh, give you a little history, this is a scam being perpetrated on the public by our gang of 120 in Trenton, the New Jersey legislature. In 1976, there was severe opposition to imposing an income tax. So to make it a little more palatable, the legislature at that time said, okay, we're going to put property tax caps on local municipalities. And back then, there were five, five and a half percent. That lasted about a year. Then all the special interests start going to the legislature, and this is out of caps, this isn't covered by the caps, this is, and as you all know, your municipal budget we just introduced recently, more than half of it isn't covered by the caps. This is scarce. Then they went a step further. At some point down the road, a dozen or more years ago, <coughs> they allowed municipalities to exceed the cap by up to 3.5%. And guess for what reason? For no reason. <laughs> for no reason at all, municipalities can just vote like tonight. You're going to vote to exceed the cap that the government uh, imposes. But it's meaningless. Because more than half your budget's out of caps, then you can increase it by three and a half without giving any single reason at all. And, and the public isn't aware of the scam that's been put on the public. So every year I ask you not stay within your budget like we do. We all have fixed salaries that we work with and all. We have to live within that parameter. So when you increase it by this much, I oppose it every year, and hopefully some of you will listen and not vote this year. And just, I always look a little praise. I just want to thank you, Mayor Mellon, for using the mic. Perhaps you can teach your other members. And Mr. Graziano, the last uh, planning board, remember the consultant? Mm -hmm. You grabbed the mic, the mic worked fine, she spoke loud and clear. But then she turned her head and didn't speak into the mic. So we're trying to hear, but we can't. But thank you for using the mic properly. Tell them it's got to be two inches away from your mouth, please. We don't have enough mics for everybody. I don't we're, we're working through that. They're, they're always there. I don't know what happens. They're when they said they weren't working. Has no Councilman Graziano picked it up, plugged it in, gave it to the consultant, no and it works fine. These microphones you see here don't project, they only record. Vote no motion on counts. Motion to close public to move for final adoption. Motion made second. Clerk, call roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Tupania? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Trimlover? No. We're only voting to close public. Mayor Mellon. Yes. The ordinance is approved. Ordinance number two for public hearing, ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the Township of Bell County of Essex, New Jersey, adopting the 74-102 Washington Avenue Redevelopment Plan. Make a motion. Open for public. Second. Motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Casarelli? Yes. Dupena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Mr. Lilberg? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Uh, Mayor, just a well, if they're going to make a presentation, I think the public hearing should be after we should make comments after we hear what they got to say about he's it. Making no he's making no presentation. This has been before the planning board twice, and there were public hearings there with all the professionals there, with all the drawings, with all the renderings, with all the experts. This was before the planning board already and voted on by the planning board. It's coming to us for final adoption. All right. Well, they rose and they got planned there to speak. So if you're not going to speak, you're not going to let them if present you have any questions answer? that I can't answer and I need to use our professionals to answer, they'll answer. Well, the proper way is the public speaks after a presentation. There's no presentation on the agenda. Okay. I'm going to see if they present something on it. First of all, this is not an area in the region of government. This is another scam. This is an empty property, and the reason it's empty is because the owner threw the tenant out. The owner evicted the property. It's a vacant lot that was approved over a dozen years ago uh, for 80 <coughs> units uh, on that property. This is another scam, and the public got to know. This is just to give them a pilot. 
a tax abatement that we, the taxpayers, have to subsidize for their making millions of profits on that thing. And, and we're tired of it. And you always cite, Mr. Mayor, of Jersey City, all the tax abatements. Uh, <coughs> Mayor Fuller just did you another new letter. I read you the last one. And I'll just read you in one sentence. The city has stopped the historical practice of long-term tax abatements for market rate housing. This was a Jersey City practice for decades that we committed to phase out in a responsible way and we have done that. At this point, the city hasn't granted any tax abatement for years. Thank you, Jersey City. So stop making we the taxpayers subsidize these wealthy investments. Thank you. Michael Chung, just one quick question. The address listed here says 74102. Is it 78102 or is this including the adjoining property that was going to be a kind of a reverse subdivision for this site? The, the original address was 78102, but it's listed here as 74102. Mm -hmm. Is that an error? Is that a typo? I, I don't know if it's an error. I do know that they have acquired the property next door. Because there was also, if I remember correctly, the planning board hearing for this, they were also going to acquire a property at William Street. Yes. So, but that's not that's not listed here. So I'm just confused about the address being listed here. It doesn't include Williams, but William Street wasn't part of was part of the planning board hearing. And then I guess that this is including that adjoining property to the south of 78102. Is there any clarification on the address? I don't have clarification on the address now. Does anybody here know what the, resolu what the resolution includes? Is it just the principal property, or is it two or three? Uh, our professional is here to give. It includes lot 11, which is also a William Street address. It's on the boundary map that's available with the plan. And I'll leave that. We have the boundary map. Thank you. We have a motion to close public and move for final adoption. Motion made and second. Clerk, all roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Dependent? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Jim Lubert? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Just yes. real quick, I, I know that that's now been closed, so our professionals, there was a statement made that that is not a redevelopment area. Is that a true statement? Uh, is that is that property in the redevelopment area? The, the property along, for, for the record, my name is Dean Donatelli, I'm Special Redevelopment Council for the Township. Um, the property that was mentioned on Washington on, is... Um, on, William Street is included. The entire issue. property is an area needs redevelopment. Correct. Thank you. That's all I need. Next. Ordinance well, number three for public hearing and ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances of the township of Belleville, chapter APS 2.7, stopping or standing prohibited during certain hours on certain <coughs> streets for the purpose of street cleaning. Motion open for public. Second. Motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Council member Cosarelli. Yes. Pena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Roll bell? Yes. Mayor Yes. Motion, motion to close public and move to final adoption. Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Dependia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Roll bell? Yes. Strubelberg? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Yes. Okay, next up we have public comments. We get a motion. Motion to open public comments. Second. Motion made and second to open for public comments. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Penya? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Roll bell? Yes. Strimalberg? Yes. Mayor Melvin? Yes. Just before we start, uh, a lot of new faces here again. Public commenting is just that. It's your opportunity to speak on anything you want, including anything you heard here today. Re residents are limited to a public comment here in about five minutes. Thanks. Mayor and Councilman, how are you? How you doing? you anymore. You were still <laughs> <You're> here. <laughs> You're here. And um, I'd like to bring everybody's attention to the Department of Public Works. I know I spoke to Michael about it a while ago. And it's, a, it's actually a disgrace. Has anybody been down there, Steve? Have you been? You're talking about the physical, the physical, the physical plant, the, physical, yeah, the yard, the, the equipment, yeah, yes, the, the spirit of core of the men that worked there, the unhealthy conditions that we're dealing with. It's a disgrace. 
You know, I pulled DEP. I didn't want to, but I got to a point where I had no alternative to do it. It's not a healthy environment for people to work there. And I, I do have photographs here. If anyone wishes to say it. Yeah, sir. So just, just, just the gym. I know you mentioned that you had no alternative. You could have come here first, then, but uh, they have an I waited. You know what, Mr. Mayor? I waited maybe three years before I got to a point where I just got fed up. I mean, I I live in town, and I know Mr. Tucci said the guys were out cleaning up and doing it. What about your own house? Don't you clean your own house before you go out? Now. I think you were the person to mention it would cost maybe $200,000 to clean up this. That's contaminated fill. It's going to cost more than that. And I don't know how many yards of fill are there, but it looks like more than $200,000 worth of uh, damage is done. Not including the leaf bags that are piled up. If you can look at that, you can keep those pictures, by the way. And I have three questions on, on the record, I guess, Kelly. Um, three questions I'd like to ask. I'd like a, 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 an estimate of the amount of fill that will have to be removed from that area. I'd like an estimate of how much it's going to cost the township to remove that uh, debris. And I would like an, estimate, uh, an estimated time of when they will commence doing that. I mean, Steve, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, I think it's really a disgrace. It really is. And our, in, I mean, I know Mr. Tucci was here back in when I was the head of DPW and we paved the yard. You didn't want, you were reluctant to do it, but I convinced you to do it. Now, I don't recall it going that way, but okay. no, we know it was. We took it out of recycling. <laughs> I remember it quite well, but um, it's 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 a health hazard, Mr. Mayor and Council. It really is. And Tom, congratulations. Okay. And congratulations to you too. That's all I have to say. But those three questions, I'll try to be here on the 28th and get some. Well, we have the engineer here. He can help me out. So I, you know me, I was given straight, and I, I'm equally as appalled at that, and I have been since day one. I, I spoke with you at the chandelier. I've, I've had many conversations. We've been here. We've been here ten months, and all three of those questions that you asked, I believe, can be answered because we're ready to, we're ready to make an action plan to do that down there. Well, uh, so I believe I'm, we do have those three answers because I've been pounding it. Are down we going to are we going to bond this? Is this what it's already in? I don't know if you're prepared to answer this today. I, I, I can. We, we budgeted $200,000 last year to, to begin removing some of that bill, which is, as I'm so sure you know, has been there more than it three It's years been there now. long before. It's been there forever. We did have companies know. come out to. I'm sorry? We did have companies come out to look yes, at it. Yes, we did. So we, we do have going out to bid again. <coughs> we have uh, $200,000 in uh, for this year. All right, to begin doing that. We also are in the process of putting a plan together to secure the facility so that not just anyone can come in no. and, and dump and or remove our recyclables from there or anything else or our topsoil. We're going to camera the place. Uh, so it means it's a lot of years in the making, Jim. I know you know that as a right. um, We are moving in the right direction. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, we'll, excuse me, finish. Yeah. and we will also be going out to pick. Uh, to get rid of some okay. The other thing is, and I don't know if anybody knows it, there should be hay bales around those piles of dirt and a soil fence because we're leaching dirty water into our catch basins down there. It's contaminated. So, I mean, these are some of the things that we should do that we haven't done. So, I believe we're getting there. Okay. I do. All right. I do. I'll, We've been I'll talking see, about it a lot. I'll see you at the meeting on the 28th. Thank, Thank you very much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you.
Hi, good evening. Um, first time or something. Sure. Name and um, address then for the record. Uh, Roseanne Masano. I live um, on Division Avenue, not far from high school, 271. I've been a resident there and I'm in my 16th year. There is a gentleman um, that's across the street on the corner of Knowlton and Division. Um, right now, it, it's going on about two years of this man. He, he's mentally sick. He stands outside all day and night screaming and yelling to the point that I can't get any sleep. I, I'm, I'm a career person. I wake up, I go to work, but this man screams outside all day long. He screams at the kids walking up from the high school. He scares the bejesus out of them that they have to cross the street. Every window is broken in the home. Every door is broken. It's wide open. All the cats are coming in and out, in and out of there. Bags of garbage piled up. So summer's coming. <laughs> The stench that comes out of the home is just disgusting. And I know that you did have a program like clean and something going on with fixing up all the Yeah, so I don't know how that house got missed, um, but there's no windows, there's no doors. And in the summer, the, the man's so sick, he comes outside with the garden hose and that's his shower. Like the rest of us neighbors there, it's, it's northeast just, or northwest? It's right on the, I know. I'll wait for you to finish it. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, you can, the, there's a hole in the roof now because I think she must have set the house on fire somehow. It's like a hoarding incident. The police won't go in. The, the health department won't go in because they're saying that it's so contaminated inside and filled up with stuff. But it's not even that part, not the eyesore and, and the health aspect and the cats running back and forth in and out just eating all the garbage. It's the fact that the man screams and yells and I just want to sleep at night. Got it. Got it. Thank you. So, well, I would greatly appreciate your help. How long has this been going on? A long time. Yes, a, a long time, but the screaming and, and yelling. How come it wasn't before? It's a long time. And no one complained. Um, I don't know that, well, the man, the older man next door to him, he died last year, so he couldn't complain. His screaming and yelling just started about a year ago. I think he's just lost his marbles completely, and he just stands out there and screams. So, um, I travel. Yeah, I travel quite often for work, so I couldn't get here. So. Thank you. So, just to give you some information, we're well aware of it. I'm well aware of it. I've got numerous complaints from residents on both division and, I guess, with Nolte. And Nolte, yeah. Nolte. The police department is well aware of they it. They come all the time. Code, right. The construction code department is well aware of it. Uh, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but uh, there's definitely some mental unstableness that's going on there. And I do know, or I was told that the, there are multiple warrants out. Because what happens is you have a house that's in disrepair. We can issue a ticket. If you don't come to court, we issue a second ticket. If you don't come to court, there's a warrant that's issued. Now it comes down to a, a decision from our police department on, on what they do. And we have, I've been in the manager's office with the police chief. This particular gentleman and this address has been uh, discussed. There, I believe we have, on more than one occasion, arrested him. <coughs> Those are the warrants. You have to understand, we're dealing with something that's called bail reform now. So what we do is we send our guys out there, our police officers and women out there, and we put them in harm's way to go arrest somebody who's mentally unstable because of the condition of their house. And they're, they're in harm's way, clearly. They then arrest the person, they bring him in here, and in an hour, to book and release. And there's nothing that we can do. It's bail reform. There's absolutely nothing that we can do about it, unfortunately. We've had people, uh, there was somebody living on Division Avenue below Washington Avenue, living in a tent. And we sent construction code there, construction code there, sent the police department there to, to, to deal with the warrants. Comes in, literally will tell the county, you're never going to see me again. Just walks in the door. So our hands are tied. Um, it, the, uh, we have our deputy police chief is here today, representing the police department. I saw him writing down notes already, so I'm sure that we'll give it another pass and give it another look, and we'll follow up with our construction code department. We are aware it's an unfortunate situation. I've seen this gentleman, and our 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 hands are from the construction code side. Our hands are tied, and even from our law enforcement. So should I call the police at night? I mean, it's not a 911 if, thing, if but you he are stands out there all night. Yes, yeah, you call. You yeah. call. I, I just want to go get because, some sleep so I can go to work. Because the more the more calls you make, the more the more opportunity we have to log that as a nuisance, and that gives us a little more leverage. So to then use I'll, I'll be calling every evening. But we are aware. Your points are valid. Uh, we're aware of it. Our police department has been there. Our construction code department has been there. What about the health department with all the animals that are going in and out? We can 
which the manager can refer to more. We, we, you know, the, I know it's the corner. It's uh, the corner at the Dalton, 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 Dalton. It's on the north. East. North there is west. no other corner, yeah. There's no other corner. There's the other side of the street on Dalton. Oh. Yeah, the You'll know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we actually walked it. We, we walked Nolan and Division, uh, Belmar a few weeks ago. Um, but the health department should do something too. Yeah. The animals they're going to issue a violation. It's not going to show up in court. Okay. And we're going to be in the same situation. Same thing. I appreciate your time. Though. Thank sorry, you. Sorry. I really wish we could do more. Just keep calling every night. Just keep calling. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, do you have that? Yes. Okay, thank you. Motion closed. 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 Resolution 21. Motion closed. 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 Have you done it on this township manager? <clears throat> then he's not a township manager yet, and I don't know if we do further background check on township manager. It's on the agenda to appoint him, so I'm asking if before you appoint him, have you done a background check on no, him? I haven't done a background check on him. You haven't? Oh. Uh, I can assure you I, I don't have a record, so <laughs> I don't have to take a background check. I'm not talking about you. No, you did mention me, so I'm just responding. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, I'm going to mention you next. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be disappointed. You <laughs> I think this is your your last meeting. No, no, no. Uh, all right. No. You're so going to wait for the last one, Mr. Friend. Until I Mr. Friend, yeah. just address the chair, please. The other question is, um, why are we giving Mr. Tucci a consulting contract? Is this new town manager not capable of running the town? That's your second question. Okay. Yeah, you know how it goes, Mr. Franklin. So you're going to say all your comments, and then we'll answer it if we can answer it. It's okay. not a back and forth conversation. All right, so, so I can stay within my time. Sure. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to eat up your time. We went into private session uh, with a new attorney, uh, Del Sardo, in regards to litigation in Mellon versus Township of Belleville. Uh, who changed attorneys from Mr. George Freno, who was doing a great job for four years? How do we change attorneys? Who authorized changing the attorneys on that case? I'm not allowed to speak on it. I, I can respond to that. I did. I did because against the wishes of uh, the mayor and council at the time, uh, the instructions were not followed by the previous attorney. So I made the decision to change attorneys uh, to bring on Mr. Del Sol. So we can blame the mayor and council. Uh, if the mayor got involved, that he had a conflict. If he had anything to do with it, but it's his case. But, um, Do you want to correct your statements? To, to, I believe you mentioned the mayor. Let, let, let's back up. I, I, obviously For those words. council persons, obviously the mayor and the newly elected council people, all right, could not uh, be participate in any discussions relative to this. All right, so after consultation, all right, with the remaining council people, it was my decision to change attorneys because the previous attorney again did not follow the instructions. That we gave. Thank you. Well, that makes it even more interesting. So our four old friends are the ones responsible for that. Thank you, guys. Please right. address the chair. Now, I, I just want to read a few excerpts from the court case, which is, I have thick copies of all of them. Um, Mr. Fino did an excellent job. In the lawsuit, these are what the judge said. These are some of his comments. The plaintiff brought a frivolous lawsuit. Then the plaintiff voluntarily dismissed the lawsuit. Then the plaintiff tried to withdraw his dismissal of the lawsuit. Then plaintiff failed to meet many deadlines for discovery. The judge also said this litigation is a careless filing without reasonable factual or legal grounds, a basis for which this court has rightly imposed sanctions on the plaintiff. Two, the plaintiff claimed delay in opening, uh, approving his liquor license transfer, which is barred by a township ordinance because he couldn't transfer it. We had an ordinance 750 feet. But then this council, if they got left, you change it to accommodate the mayor that you can move within 500 feet. This is absolutely unbelievable that we, the taxpayers, who, by the way, we're the defendants also because it says the lawsuit is against uh, Kevin Esposito and the township of Bell. Township of Bell was all 36 or 38,000 residents. So we're all part of this litigation. 
And finally, on April 4, 2017, Judge Wal two judges, not one, two, Judge Walter on April 4 said he declines to consider the request for sanctions for this frivolous <coughs> lawsuit. On November 20, uh, 30th, 2018, six months ago, <coughs> Judge Hayden said that uh, <coughs> uh, plaintiff has not established fraud or misconduct and his motion to vacate his prior stipulation of voluntary dismissal is denied. So, I'm asking, I hope this council, and if the three are uh, in conflict, I hope the four of you don't pull some shady things, especially you, Mr. Cogarelli. Mr. Friend, my, friend. Well, I, I <laughs> Mr. Friend, friend Antoni. I'm in the third ward, and you're my third ward council. Mr. Friend Antoni, please I want address you the chair. To reference. I need you to sum up. Well, I can refer to my council. No, you really can't. You have to yeah. address the chair, and you're out of time. Okay, we refer to the chair. Mr. Cogarelli, you're my councilman, and I hope this case isn't thrown out the window. Thank you, Mr. You Friend. people have to represent the taxpayers we better get the cost, all the attorney costs that has cost us for the last three or four years. And if not, we're going to hold you four responsible. Thank you. Sir? I'm going to ask the same question again, and I'm going to keep asking it. When are we going to start putting everything online so we can, I can read it instead of coming here? Because I've been asking that for what, the last six months. Maybe we can find do. I mean, you have two IT people up there. I mean, it's very simple for you to do it. All it takes is four votes up there to say, let's do it. It's not that difficult. Thank you. I'm not done yet. Okay. I'm far from done. You, um, well, Mario, correct me. You sat up here at one point, right? Yeah. And did you? But did we didn't have your technology then. Right. Back then you did. We didn't have. We had newspapers back then. People knew what was going on. Back now, then you did. now you depend on social media. media. And you can, at that, you can direct any way you want and tell people. If they don't have it, they have to believe it. But if you have the newspaper, you think you'll be getting away with a lot of stuff? I think we've made a lot of progress communication-wise. Oh, we now have a great new website. I'm we not now live stream our council meetings. <coughs> How me. about like, I'm not acknowledging criticizing. some of that rather than just finding more things to complain no, about? I'm not criticizing. I think you're doing good things. When I gave you the excellent award from the Chamber of Commerce, I meant all those things I said about you. Okay. But there are a few things I don't, I don't agree with you. No problem. So, but overall, I do commend you on the things you're doing because you are putting the community together. Thank you. So I'm not going to criticize you for and that. I will give you even a better answer. If the money's in the budget for this year, you <laughs> actually do what you're asking to do. Okay, so now, the other thing I had, uh, Mr. Frank and Tony mentioned on resolution number 21. I noticed this morning there was an on air, and I noticed it's on now. So after I sit down, maybe you can give us the terms, the conditions, the package, the benefits on that, if you're going to vote on it. And um, one of the questions you asked me, I'm using up my five minutes, is, as you know, I'm opposed to the pilot programs because I don't think it's fair to the taxpayers. And you mentioned before about 4,500 senior households. If they, they don't have social media, which you probably acknowledge, but if they knew how much break these developers were getting on these tax programs, I think they'd be up in <coughs> arms and they wouldn't be too happy. Now, also, we talked about Jersey City in a while back. Well, I go to Jersey City a lot. In Jersey City, they give out, well, I don't know if you said a billion dollars, maybe it's more, I don't know, in, in uh, tax breaks. But also, their schools have lost $120 million in state aid. Besides losing $120 million in state aid, one of my clients, when they did the refal, the refal doubled his taxes from 12000 to 24000 all these abatements are supposed to be helping the taxpayers. And here they are forcing them out. The guy says, i got to move to Pennsylvania. I mean, all this money coming in from these so-called pilot programs. Then we're talking about the, <coughs> the funding for the schools. That's got, funding is fine. That's great. But what if it don't last forever? Are these pilot programs going to kick in and, and help fund this? I don't think so. Uh, you talk about millennials. And that's, what about senior housing? What about other generations that are here? Too? Why are we only focusing on millennials? Are they the only people in the world? I paid for their education. They have to pay for somebody else's too. And the problem is we don't have a, uh, a newspaper which gives accountability to say, hey, look, he said this, I said this. And let the people decide on, on that. I asked you a few questions last time, a month ago, two months ago. Will the rent, con will the pilot programs be under rent control? And I'm opposed to that again because 
we have five years of payment. Give them five year of payment. And here, uh, large corporation, Amazon paid no federal taxes on $11.2 billion. And it, what it boils down to is constantly the taxpayer, the taxpayer has to pay for it. And there were a number of pharmaceutical companies, they don't pay any taxes. But why do I have to keep paying for it? Where's my tax break? I improved my house. I improved my house and then, and then my assessment goes up. So where's my break? Is it fair? Is it fair to me? And just the other thing I was going to say, if these pilot programs are so great, I'd like you to 30, five. Excuse me, somebody speak. Somebody speak. You're speaking also. Everybody's brutally interrupted. We're going to pay attention to our one person. Tell him. I'm not telling you. Okay. So, if they're so great, why don't we just put it on a ballot and ask the people, give them the facts. I would like to see how much each, I'm going to do it all for Zion, so I'm going to find out how much they're paying in tax. You're paying to one of the, one of the pilots who gave out paying supposed to pay two seventy a year in taxes, they're paying one thirty five. Where's the breaks? So we could put it on a ballot or maybe I could put it on the ballot. So we'll have to decide what to do here. Thank you. Phyllis Frantiatoni, I see that you have on the agenda to hire a new town manager. I want to know what the package deal is gonna get. What is his salary gonna be? And I want to know what Mr. Tucci's salary is going to be as a consultant. With those two things. And also, when you mentioned about sending out a newsletter and that the seniors asked for it, I was at that Friday meeting. You asked the seniors, they did not ask you about sending out a newsletter. First of all, we have Channel 34 in Belleville from the high school. Most seniors have the internet, uh, not the internet, have cable TV. Why can't you broadcast on that channel, let them watch the town meetings, what goes on, on that channel? I mean, we have it there. Comcast gave it to help them out to get however they got it. Instead of live streaming, it's all for the younger people because a lot of the older people and even younger people do not have where they can live stream. So I suggest that you so close with Mr. Tomko, talk to him and try to get the meetings on their cable television, because it's part of Bell. Yes. Thank you. Mary Higgins, 148 Brighton Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, regarding resolution 21 appointing Anthony D. Iacono as town <coughs> manager, um, I believe previously you had stated there was going to be a committee to interview the best candidates. Um, that committee ever convene to interview the best candidates for town manager? Because you mentioned that previously several times. Was there a committee? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, were you on that committee, Mayor Mellon? Nope. Okay, thank you. All right, I'd be interested to know who was on the committee. So why don't, let me field all your questions and then well, I don't want to eat up your time with our answers. Okay, okay, thank you, but I'm, I think the public has the right to know who was on the committee to screen the best candidate for a uh, town manager um, because if you Google his name and if you look at newspaper articles, um, it shows that he had been terminated and fired from a previous municipal position that I believe he had as town manager and for him to be the best possible candidate for Belleville uh, is just mind-boggling. I'd like to know the justification of the people on the committee to even even bring this up, let alone have a resolution. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Motion to close public. Motion made to say the closed public. Call the roll. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Dependia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Robel? Yes. Mr. Yes. Burke? Yes. Mayor Melham? Yes. Resolution? Make a motion to move the consent agenda. Motion made and second. Motion made and second to move the consent agenda. <coughs> Two <coughs> issues. Yeah. Um, 
contract with the council. Who negotiated it? Who put it on the agenda? We were not privy to any of this. We were never told about the conditions of employment, how much salary, and what benefit package he would have. Is he getting 150000 250000 This should be tabled and brought to the next meeting. It's a disgrace. Councilwoman, did you not get a packet, or did you send an email, or did you ask any questions to the clerk, to the manager? No questions the were ever asked by any of you. And this gentleman back here that's laughing at me, I think you better do something with him. With the gray suit and laughing and giggling. Thank you. The How dare he does that to me? The salary set by salary orders, Councilwoman. What? The salary set by salary orders. The whole contract's got The whole contract. The whole salary set by salary orders. That's fine. I, I just don't want to. He doesn't deserve to have it, okay? okay. I do not That's want to. Vote. That's it. That's I vote. voted no. Okay. That's it. End it. Okay. Continue to call on the roll. Mayor Melman. Yes. Resolution is approved. 25. Make a motion to move 25, Steve. Can you kind of explain what this is about? Sure. Um, resolution 25 is to uh, authorize the, uh, the mayor to sign a settlement agreement whereby the township actually is going to benefit a great deal from it. Um, this lawsuit, the township and, and many other towns in our area who are, who are, are uh, were members of the Sake Valley Sewer Commission, were sued a few years ago um, by the government, as well as a lot of business owners, for contaminating the Sake River. Uh, the township at the time, to make a long story short, had to pay, uh, as part of the settlement, $95,000. Our insurance carrier, the township's insurance carrier at the time, the, the environmental GIF, paid the town back forty-five. Uh, paid the, the town back fifty thousand dollars. So the town was out of pocket fifty forty-five thousand dollars. The GIF then hired an attorney to research every town's insurance policies dating back to the fifties and sixties and seventies, and they were able to find insurance that also covered that um, period of time. <coughs> and entered into a settlement whereby the insurance policies would pay the GIF $122,000 and change. It's a little higher than $122,000. And what, what the township is going to get out of that is the $45,000 that it had not been reimbursed for. So the end result is the town um, will not be, will, has been reimbursed every penny that it put out for that settlement. Um, and once this settlement's approved, uh, the GIF will get the $122,000 and send the township an additional $45,000, making the township policy. Thank you. Make a motion. Second. We have a motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Casarelli? Yes. Dependent? Yes. Granciano? Yes. Satori? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strew Wilbert? Yes. Mayor Miller? Yes. Do business? Adjourn. Motion made second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you.